So if you've been a JavaScript developer for a quite some time and you always wanted to learn TypeScript, but you couldn't actually figure out the best way to approach it, well, in this video, we'll try to approach TypeScript in the simplest way possible and also go through all the basics of how to move your knowledge as a JavaScript developer into using TypeScript from scratch. So to get started with TypeScript and immediately start working with it, you first need to install the TypeScript compiler or the actual TypeScript language toolchain. So for that, you just use npm install dash g for global so you can install this globally or you can install it per project but it's better to install it globally just for getting started then just type in type script click enter and that's it this will install typescript just in a couple of seconds and there you go so install the latest version of typescript now to check if typescript is installed you just type in tsc for the typescript compiler and do dash dash help just to see what it's going to give us and there you go this means the typescript compiler or the latest typescript compiler uh, the 4.5.5 has been installed on our machine and now we can use this compiler to take the typescript code or whatever code you've got like the repository that uses TypeScript and compile it down into a JavaScript code. But also it depends on the type of projects that you're going to be working on. For example, right here, I got this Node.js project that we want to integrate TypeScript into. Now, what I did is actually to install the TS node and what is this TS node package? It's actually a node version that it uses TypeScript compiler underneath the hood just to make sure that, you know, you've got Node.js, the whole Node.js kind of system and, and everything inside by uses the TypeScript thing. So just installing this and whatever that you want to run right now, that is actually a dot TypeScript instead of a dot JavaScript, you simply need to use the TS node just to go ahead and run this code. And if you run the start scripts in here, so do npm run start, we're going to notice that it's immediately going to use the dot TypeScript file and it's going to compile it and everything like you were working with JavaScript, but instead you are doing TypeScript. The other important part of the TypeScript language is the tsconfig.json. Now this JSON file tells TypeScript how it works, how it compiles stuff, what type of like languages or the target that's going to compile into, and so much more options. So you see here, simply if you start, it's going to include everything that goes inside of SRC. Now what that means, the compiler of TypeScript or the TSC is going to already know that, oh, I only want to include what is inside of the SRC. So it's going to go inside of the SRC, it's going to compile everything and only what's inside of the SRC. Also, if you want to like exclude something, maybe you want to exclude the node modules, that's what you're going to want to do here. Uh, there's the compiler options in here. For example, you're telling it the target is the ES5. So we want to like take the TypeScript code that we want to compile and we're going to be taking it to compile it down into a javascript code that is es5 for ecmascript version 5. now why we commonly use the es5 instead of like es next or es2021 or whatever it's simply because browsers nowadays support mainly the es5 and they don't have like higher support of the other kind of you know newest languages or newest ECMAScript versions. So if you simply run the TSC on this particular directory that has the tsconfig.json, the TypeScript compiler will automatically detect this JSON and it will automatically read the configuration and does the compilation for us. And it will output this actually to the out directory that is inside of the destination. As Chris in here created us a destination folder. So if you go inside of it, you're going to find everything in JavaScript Plus those D TypeScript stuff, those are like used for if you want to export this as a library. But the most important part for us is actually the users.javascript and everything that is .javascript in here. As you see, it's a little bit different than what we put it already on. For example, the index in here, it doesn't use the import, it uses the require. It has so many other different stuff in here. And this is what the ES5 is. And this is what actually TypeScript compiler actually compiled down from TypeScript into ES5 JavaScript. So the most important part of TypeScript are interfaces. Since we all know JavaScript is completely based on objects and literally any type is kind of like, you know, based on an object, well, interfaces allow you to declare typings for those particular objects. Now, for example, here, if you take a look on the first interface in here, we've got a user. So how you define an interface, you just do interface, then you give it a name, and you can imagine this interface as a, just a type that defines what an e-user has as a types. So for example, this e-user is actually going to be an object, and this object has ID, name, email, password, role, and image URL, and yada, yada, yada. And as you in here, each one of these has a particular primitive type. 
Now these types in here, a string, a number, a boolean maybe, and other stuff are primitive types of TypeScript. So these simply define for us types for different properties. And these properties belong into the user object or the user interface, more likely. So this way you can turn any entity or object into a typed object that uses an interface. And this will allow you to easily understand what this object actually has inside of it as properties and how does it behave and everything that goes behind the scenes of the project and everything you need to know in order to manipulate the objects. So for example, here you can create as many interfaces as you would like for different type of stuff. For example, an image that could have a URL and inside of it, there's a size. And this size is indeed is another kind of object. And this, this particular object can in, like represent an interface inside of it and it would work perfectly. For example, for products, yes, you can use an image inside of the projects in here. So you can reference another interface into that one. And this way you can reference things. You can immediately say, oh, like this particular image has the type of this one image. And maybe an ID has a string and all that kind of stuff that involves around a particular product. The other special part about interfaces is there is interfaces that are generics. Now, what I mean by generics is an interface that takes another type as a variable. So you pass it in here another time between both of these open and closed brackets. And this particular type can be used inside of the interface to disclose or actually define a different other kind of field. For example, this product, I'm going to be passing this template into this particular product and the product going to use this template as a type. So why we use generics is basically just to reuse that generic for different types of things. For example, this one is a backpack that has a product and a product could be anything. So we pass in the type of products on the backpack and we like we define the quantity and the ID. Then how can you use it later on is actually you can declare a type that is an Apple that extends a product. So Apple is actually a product or brand more particularly. But for example, an iPhones in here is actually a type of backpack of Apple devices. And it's actually has a product in here. It has, you know, different specifications of what a product tells us about in here, depending on the product's interface, like the image description, and everything is right here and it implements the quantity and the ID that the backpack imposes. And to simply use an interface, you simply just declare a regular variable as you would do in JavaScript. For example, there is an e user in here and that e user is going to implement or actually has the type of an e user depending on the interface. So how you do this, you do colon, then you give it the interface type you defined. And here you can simply just create an object, but this e user is clearly there is a red line underneath it. Why? Because it's missing the properties. Why? Because those properties, all of them, only the image URL and all of these are required properties. And how do we know this is a required properties? Because it doesn't have a question mark underneath that, or it's like at the end before the colon, it doesn't have that. So if he has a question mark, that means this is an optional field and it's not going to be included. For example, in here, ID, like whatever, it's a number. So two, maybe you want to enter up a name as Bob, maybe you want to enter an email like Bob at me.com or something like this. Um, password one, two, five, and you can do like roll user exclusive. The red line is gone. So this is actually just, it's not required anymore, but you still can in, go ahead and enter this and it can be like a URL or whatever you want it to be. And for defining arrays or maybe a map or even a set, you simply just use those primitive times and you pass them as generics. So an array or a map or a set in TypeScript is simply a generic that takes another type and actually creates for you an array regarding what interface you provided. So for example, in here, if you got like an users and you want to create a users array that is simply like this, what type you want to give it is simply we can do user with just two brackets in here. And that means this is an users array. If you take a look on it, that's a users array. The other way around, you can just do array and we can use this array as generics. So you do array and you pass in that interface as generic and hell yeah, you get those e users. For example, you got users map. You can do the same thing in here. It's going to be a map of like user that is, has an ID of a number and an e user and it takes a new map. Just simple as that. A set, you can do basically the same thing, but these are the simple stuff in here. And the good part about TypeScript and all that kind of stuff is actually the interlicense part. So for example, in here, since we already know that this users definitely has a type of an array, what we can simply do just users.push and you can have 
all the interlicense stuff that you could get from VS Code powers, of course, and you can all know about that before jumping through into the code. And the other awesome part is as well, so you can do an OR operator to define one or multiple tabs, or you can use the AND as well. But most of the times you would want to use the OR in here. So for example, this E users could be an array or sometimes could be an indefined because sometimes the server doesn't return the users or something wrong happens. So what you can do, for example, this could be, oh, I want this to be indefined or maybe no, you can do that. Or what you can do, for example, if you fetch an E user in here, you can have a type as an E user or null, and you initialize this as a null because you allow this type in here. If you completely remove that, you're going to have this as an error that doesn't allow you to set enter the null value in there. For functions, it's actually even easier. So once you understand how interfaces works and how you put types and how to use the call and kind of keyword in here to define types in TypeScript, for functions, it's much easier actually. So a function, you just declare a regular JavaScript function, but instead of just passing in here like a regular argument without a like, you know, a type, you just do a colon and you do give it a type. And it's just going to make your life way much easier to understand what the functions does and what kind of input it takes. Also for the output in here, we do like in, in a colon after, you know, the, the actual parentheses in here, the function, and we give it the return type expected from this particular function. So in here, we're simply returning the count or the top count number provided of the active users currently on our platform. So if you go into a little bit more advanced use case in here, so comparing actual JavaScript code that has just a class of users and it does manipulation of finding a user by email, inserting a user, find all the users. So it's like kind of a small database or just does a cache. Uh, on memory for like holding off users. And if you compare this to the TypeScript version, you're gonna find a huge difference. And where the huge difference is actually coming from is actually understanding the code and knowing what types or what the data in here that we're manipulating, especially the user's data, what does it have underneath the hood? So for example, in here, if you take a look just real, real quickly, we're going to need to look like this is a class user. They both have a classes and this one has an interface. So this one is basically at first is telling us, oh, it has an ID, name, email, password, and yada, yada, yada. This one, take a look on it. Oh, I know it's an array of users, but I don't know exactly what the users has or what kind of fields that a particular user should have. Does it have an image? Is it going to return a role or not? Or are we having a name? Or are we having something like a full name? Or maybe are we having first name, then another field completely for last name? It's really, really confusing just to understand what's going on. If we go a little bit deeper into the class, we're going to see in here, for example, they both return promises in here, for example, for find by ID. But this one, it doesn't tell you what type is going to return. Just by after reading the function, oh, you realize this is going to return an, a user that is found by ID. But in here, you just simply know that this one is going to return a promise as is the other and it's going to return either a user undefined if it doesn't find it. It's pretty easy to understand that. And also it takes an ID and this ID is actually a type that is actually referenced from the interface on top in here. So we can reference the types that are inside of an interface by using the bracket syntax in here and we want to access that particular field. So this will give us the type instead of the value. So this is not for value, it's for type. So for an example use case, Let's take this, for example, this TypeScript is awesome kind of application. So what this one does is actually going to communicate to the API that's going to provide you access to a list of users. So simply in here for our server, we're just having a couple of users. We're inserting those users with image, role, password, and email. I got three of them. And we're just like exposing a route of users that we're doing all of this. Remember, if we take a look on that, that users has an interface and this is the interface of an user. If we try to copy this bit one and we go to our front end project that is using React and actually initialize this one using the create React app CLI and you use the TypeScript template. Now, if we quickly just go ahead and take a look on this, this simply just go ahead and renders users, but it's not doing only that. It's actually fetching this from the actual route or the actual server we've put together and it's putting all together. As Chris in here, it's knowing that this e users is an actual e user type and it's actually an array. If you take a look on this user type, we've already put it, 
that it's actually implementing the interface and both server and the back end and the front end, they both agree to use the same data type of an user. So everyone will be happy and everyone will understand what exactly is going on behind the scenes. So anyway, guys, that was a quick guide. Hope you guys enjoyed the particular video. And if you like this type of quick guide, just going through different stuff for frameworks, libraries, languages, let me know. I will be happy to do more. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you all hopefully in the next ones.